Welcome, everybody. We are here live at Gamescom 2014. I'm sitting with the awesome people behind Pillars of Eternity. What's going on? Tell me what's up. It's great. This is uh, the first time that we're going to be showing the backer beta. So our backer beta is going live on uh, this Monday on the 18th. So we're going to be showing some stuff, uh, content from the backer beta, which is pretty fun. No, that's awesome. And I know that we have the game. It's ready. It's, it's ready to go. So why wait? All right. Let's in. show it. Let's just dive in. <laughs> Tell me what's up with this game, man. So it's really cool. Uh, we ran a Kickstarter campaign. We had 77,000 backers, raised $4 million. Yeah, and it. Uh, oh! <laughs> we, we set out to make a game that was a spiritual successor to the Infinity Engine games. Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, Planescape Torment. So it has a ton of cool exploration, tactical party-based combat, uh, with a mouse and keyboard style control, which is a very traditional PC role-playing game uh, setup, and a cool reactive story that you can go through with or without companions. So, yeah. No, that's an I mean, those games that you just dropped, they're, they have such a great history to them. And there's a lot of expectations for this game then going into it, right? Very, very high expectations. We've been, we've been nervous about um, you know, the backers seeing it. Uh, we had some footage come out after E3. People responded very positively to it. So we think the backer beta is ready for people to dive into and, and really test out. So we set the backer beta in one of our side content areas. A lot of people are very sensitive about spoilers. So we set it off the critical path. Um, it has uh, a lot of several hours of gameplay in it, wilderness areas, the town, a couple of dungeons, combat, conversations, quests, and all that sort of stuff. So it should be should be pretty fun. That's awesome. It sounds like it's stacked, and uh, we're looking at the character build right here. Yes, uh, Adam's going through character creation. Uh, I think the last time we showed this, we didn't show off all the different character characters you could build. Today, he's building a godlike paladin. So the godlike uh, are kind of unusual looking, as you can see by the flames coming off her head. And uh, in this case, he's building up a paladin. They're very good support, support combatants, good on the front line, but they also have really cool targeted abilities and auras that they can use. So we haven't shown paladins before, and they're pretty fun to play. Is that a fencing sword? Yeah, well, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a rapier. So de right. depending on the culture that you pick, it gives you different gear at the start of the game. So he picked a paladin from Old Valia, and Old Valia uh, kind of has this more swashbuckly style to them. So you have a breastplate and a rapier and a small shield going in. So That's awesome. Sassy. sassy. I like that name. That's a great it's name. <laughs> you can't get any more tough than that. Yep, it's Sassy, the female godlike paladin. So when you start off the backer beta, you create the character at first level, but you can immediately advance it to fifth level because we wanted players to get an experience of the character sort of midway through the game. We want to use the backer beta as a way to test out the mechanics, uh, see how the players feel about the classes as they advance. So you start off at fifth level in the backer beta, and you can go all the way to eighth level. You can experiment with the different skills, the different talents and abilities that you're getting. So Adams, as he's advancing here, he's putting points on all of his different skills, and he's getting uh, different talents and abilities. He just got a, an aura there. Paladins have different auras. He's activating one of them right now, Zealous Focus. As the other party members come near the Paladin, Zealous Focus gives them an accuracy bonus. You can switch from Zealous Focus to Zealous March, which gives all the party members a movement speed bonus, but they're exclusive. So over time, the Paladin unlocks more of these abilities, and they can use them for uh, different effects uh, tactically in combat. And this village that we're in is uh, the community of Deerford. And this inn that Adam is going into is the Dracogen Inn, which is one of our backer inns. One of our, in the, during the Kickstarter campaign, the backers could back bigger and bigger sort of uh, rewards. Uh, one of the higher end ones was to get a tavern. This is the Dracogen Tavern. Behind the bar is uh, Dengler, one of our backers, Stephen Dengler, has his character in here. He's the barkeep. So we're going to talk to him and uh, just check out some of the stuff in the inn. Uh, we wanted to make the inns and the game feel a little more interactive. So you come into the inns. When you rest, if you choose to spend more money at an inn, you can get long-term resting bonuses, which are great for if you're going to go out on a really tough adventure. So Adam just used that. Also, you can use the Adventurer's Hall to build more party members. We have eight companions that you can get over the course of the game. But if people are like, you know what, I just don't like this priest. Like, this guy fucking sucks. You can, you, can build your, you can build your own priest, or you can build a whole party of priests, or rogues, or dwarves, or godlike, or whatever. So uh, you can use the inn in a little more ways like that. But otherwise, there are four quests you can go through in the backer beta. We're going to go on this quest where you're going to go, uh, this pig farmer has, all, has had all of his pigs stolen, or most of his pigs stolen by an ogre. Classic story of ogre stealing pigs. So he wants you to go take care of them. And ogres are very powerful, but they're also very smart. So no one really wants to go and try to deal with this ogre. So he's sending you off to go deal with it. 
Damn those ogres, man. <laughs> can't we just give them pigs? They always well, stealing them, man. You you can't you can't actually talk your way out of the situation. Wait, what? Yeah, I'd yeah, be yeah. really good at that. Yeah, so I don't want to fight anymore. No, I just want to talk it you out. You can if um, one of the things that we try to emphasize in Pillars of Eternity, like many of Obsidian's role-playing games, is that you can. Uh, negotiate your way through situations. You can choose different outcomes for a quest. So if you want to choose a peaceful negotiation, or if you sometimes if you want to turn the tables on the guy who gave you the quest, you can do that as well. With Korgrak, this ogre who's doing it, you can choose to sort of negotiate a peaceful settlement or even become friends with him. So in this case, we're going to go and just murder him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fight him. That's the easy answer. Classic murder. Can can you um, negotiate, make a peaceful outcome, and still fight them? Yeah, you can. Okay, fight well then you there you go. To. That's the answer for all of and it. And actually, and actually, that's that brings up a good point. So in the game, we try to emphasize that it's it's not super important how you choose to complete the quest as long as you complete it. So whether you choose to fight or you choose to negotiate or if you fight and negotiate, you always get the same sort of experience points out of it. So some people they found that if they tried to have a peaceful negotiation, they're like, well. I didn't get experience points for uh, for killing the enemy, so I'm going to go back and kill the enemy. So we actually have chosen to go with a, a quest-only experience system. So you don't get experience from fighting, you just get through. And if you want to fight, you can. Most people choose to fight because it's just fun. Yeah, I mean, well, we're all <laughs> fighters, right? Yeah, Every yeah. single one of us. You have a whole party full of guys with all these spells and stuff. The priest is blessing the party. Beat the crap out of these beetles. This area has a beetle. Problem. Very giant, very rare beetles, too. Yes. I, I've never seen a beetle well, that size, so we, let's kill it. We had giant beetles in uh, Icewind Dale, and I, I really liked having them, and so it felt felt fitting to bring them back. So are there a lot of little Easter eggs like that? I bet. Well, I wouldn't even call them Easter eggs so much as we wanted to make sure that when people played this game, that there was a very strong sense of nostalgia to it. So the way the way that our user interface looks, obviously we changed it somewhat. It doesn't look exactly like the old game, but it still feels like it's made of stone and metal and stuff like that. The viewpoint, obviously, it's a 2D isometric game. It's very traditional, full party control. But we do want to have things like giant spiders, giant beetles, fireballs, kind of magic missile equivalents and stuff like that. We wanted to feel, feel very traditional for our backers. No, I like that. I like that sense of tradition, right? Because this is where, you know, it really started for a lot of us, this, this game type. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's so cool. It's, uh, it was very important for us to capture the spirit of those games. We never wanted to sacrifice playability in the game. We always wanted to make sure that it felt like a modern game in the sense of ease of use and functionality and all that sort of stuff. But we did want it to feel, you know, like when you boot it up, that you feel like that you're going home. Like this is, this is the game that I remember. It's not exactly the game that I remember, but it's very, very close to it. Uh-oh, Adam's getting poisoned. These Beatles are giving it to you, man. These Beatles are yeah. messing them up. Well, they came out with a lot of great albums. <laughs> These Beatles are great. <laughs> so, I mean, with this, the character he created in the beginning, is there like a Beatle warrior? Is there like one what, character you can make? anti-Beatle warrior? No, I don't think there's actually an anti-Beatle warrior, although there are certain weapons and things that you can get that give you special bonuses against. Not just beetles, but all sorts of like large beasts like that. Also, the druids have spells to deal specifically with beasts, which can be very convenient. Also, uh, cool, your wizard just got poisoned. That's pretty sick. He's down. <laughs> so one thing I'll point out, so the wizard just went down, the elf on the, on the far right. That red bar, that's your stamina. That's short-term damage. The green bar is long-term health. So the original games could be very unforgiving in terms of like, oh, zero hit points. Bye, you're dead. In Pillars of Eternity, you can, holy moly, dude, you're getting Oof, just rough. Beetle troubles. This is, what's going on, man? <laughs> Them beetles got you. <laughs> They're hitting you with everything they got. They yep. knew you were coming. They're like, we're going to get them. We don't care anymore. These, we're the beetles. You're so, not. So the poison is actually what's getting him in this fight. So he's, he's really got to take care of that wood beetle. And the rogue is getting harassed. So it's been pretty tough. Going to heal up. I'm on the edge of my seat right now, <laughs> seeing if this is going to happen. This could go. This could go very badly, depending on how things go. Oh man! I think you might want to switch to melee with that rogue, Adam. Listen to your coach. <laughs> he knows how to do this. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god! Here we go. This could end in disaster. Oh no! Can you just run away? Can you talk to the Beatles? Can you tell them? I don't think he's going to get away from Can this. you work it out with them? <laughs> Didn't they sing a song about that, too? They did. Yeah, can you just work it out? Oh, no. Oh, no, I think, oh. I think I think it's GG. I think it's GG. 
What's going to happen? So what well, happens now? Well, what happens now is we restart. Your party has done. <laughs> Man! He just quit. So he's, he's done. He's out. Something we have said is that the backer beta is actually pretty hard. <laughs> All right. You guys didn't hold back on that one. No, 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 no. You wanted it to be that hard. Well, the thing is, I mean, the original games were pretty challenging, so we're, we wanted absolutely. to make sure that they were that they were appropriately challenging. That was part of the charm of that. Um, <laughs> but you guys are seeing it live right here first. The developer that of the, the game first is getting party owned. Wipe. That was the first party wipe that we've had of the... Uh, of the session. Man. So we're going to make another Paladin here, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just, I'm so happy that happened. I mean, for you guys, it's probably like, oh, I can't believe we died. But no, for me, it it's like seeing a developer it's come a, up here and just get owned by his own game is great. It's a good preview of uh, what people will face in the backer beta, I guess. That's, and it gets harder than that. That well, was yeah, just we're, we're four on minutes easy. in. We are on easy. We are on easy. <laughs> I always play everything on easy. Well, life is should be easy. Nothing yes. should be difficult. <laughs> no, there should be no hard mode in life. So why put it in a game? Sassy number two. Sassy two. Sassy two. Bring him back. The ju sassy junior. Yes. Sassy junior. Bring him back. Incredible. Yes. Very Just well. go. Going. So yeah, we're gonna give this another whirl. We're gonna go give it another goes. run if we can, right? If we sure, can make sure. it out there. But yeah, so this whole town, Deerford, is built on top of old ruins. So Very we've tried well. to sort of incorporate that into how the uh, like how the city is set up. Like off in the distance, you can see some of the buildings are Going. built up around the old castle walls and the towers Going. from the town. And of course, of course, there are ruins underneath Going. and dungeons and all that sort of stuff. So in the backer beta, it should be like three to five hours of, of playthrough time. And then we have wilderness areas as well as dungeons and quests to go through as well. So Adam's just going to speed through character grade, or uh, leveling up his character grade. Otherwise, he's going to get brutally stomped again. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, it's been a pretty good experience working with our backers overall. They're very enthusiastic. I've been talking with a lot of the guys who've been doing this. A lot of the people on our forums have been members of the Obsidian forums and the Black Owl forums for up to 15 years. Wow, that's so, an incredible time. Yeah, so wow. I, I, I worked on the original Icewind Dale, and I was uh, I was helped run the community forums back at Black Isle. So a lot of these people that are our backers now, they were, they were uh, not backers back then, but they were our forum community members back then. So... I'm used to getting their feedback and seeing the sort of things that they like and hearing their feedback on this stuff. So it's been a very rewarding experience working right. with them directly on this. Yes. With so many backers, how do you filter through all of the, the comments and feedback? I well, mean, there's got to be a lot. Well, yeah, there is a lot. Um, and of course, they're very strong opinions. So what we try to do is just we, we realize that we can't make everyone happy with this sort of stuff. We do try to listen very carefully to what people are saying, because even if there's some dissonance and noise in there, uh, there often can be very useful advice that we can follow in it. We want to make sure that the majority of our backers are happy. Not everyone's going to be happy. And we also, when we can, have options in the game to accommodate different play styles. We try to put them in. So, for example, we do have uh, an expert mode in our game. Things like the combat HUD that we have there that's showing the stamina and how much time it's going to take be between attacks. Those are, those are elements that weren't in the original games. And some people... They don't want to see that. They want a very traditional experience. So our expert mode is there to turn off all that stuff. When you're in conversations, you also see tags for the personality reputations that you're going to get. You see the thresholds for checks. Some people don't want to see that. They want it to be very, very traditional. So expert mode turns all that stuff off. It's very easy for us. So again, we know that some players want a very, very traditional experience. When we can accommodate them, we just try to offer them those options. That's incredible. That's incredible. Just shut it off. <laughs> you don't like it? You don't have to have exactly. it. Turn it off. Exactly. So we're going to see how far Adam can get here again with these, uh, yeah. dealing with these stone needles down here. There they are. They're just waiting for you, man. They're eating rocks, whatever they're doing. <laughs> That's what they do. They're actually, they're stone beetles. So we, oh. we, we, the wood beetle is by the tree. Right. Are you immersed in our fantasy I, world yet? I picked it up without even <laughs> trying, man. I'm sitting here talking to you, and I'm just like instantly knew they're eating rocks. That's we awesome. Do, we do try to have, so when we put creatures in the environments, we do try to have them make sense when, you know, like have them doing stuff that you think they would be kind of doing in the environment. Even if they're just patrolling around, we try to immerse them in the environment a little bit. Do you have any ogres that mow the lawn? Like we No, as you oh. can see, this is a very lazy ogre. He very hasn't mowed, overgrown. He hasn't mowed any of this stuff. Very lax in his duties. <laughs> well, let's just see if we can get through this war <laughs> this <laughs> this flood of beetle flood warriors beetles. that are we just coming it. right at you. Big bad beetle borgs are coming at you right yeah. now. We got a couple of them in here. We can take care of them though. You think this time it's gonna happen? 
We'll I see. Well, we got three beetles in here this time, okay. so this could be hard. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Here we go. Fireballing your party. That's always a, a good way to go through. There we go. Got a heal. Nice comeback. Okay. So each of the each of the classes has very uh, specific things that they excel at doing. Priests are very good at doing support type abilities, so the priest always has healing abilities on hand. A lot of support things they can give buffs. They do have offensive abilities, but a lot of them are also are also oriented around helping the party out. Rogue is very very good at doing a lot of damage. They're not very tough. So second and third edition D&D, like the old Infinity Engine games. Rogues were skill-oriented characters, but they weren't that great in combat. Our rogues can do a ton of damage in combat. They can inflict a ton of uh, what we call afflictions, take characters down very quickly. So uh, rogues are really, really good at dishing out damage, but they're very fragile. So we give the rogue abilities like escape to help them teleport away from danger, stuff like that that helps them get out of trouble. And then the fighters, they're very good at, uh, it sounds like that, very good at taking damage, taking hits. They can survive a lot of hits. Very good at holding a front line. You beat him. Well, Aloth went down again, but no big deal. Huh. I feel so much better now <laughs> knowing so that I. you're able to <laughs> at least make some progress. Sure. And only one downed warrior. <laughs> Are you going to get back up there, buddy? No, nah, he's done, right? He's done. He looked like he was laid out nasty. So, actually, we can show the cyclopedia as well. So if you are having trouble with the combat, one thing you can do is you can go into the Cyclopedia. So every time you defeat an enemy, you will get uh, some information on that enemy. Depending on your lore skill, you'll get that information faster. You'll start to see their defenses, their stats, what uh, damage types they're resistant to or not resistant to. That can help you make tactical decisions to deal with those guys over time. Here we have a scripted interaction. So we've, we've had scripted interactions at various other points in the demos that we've shown. They're very cool because they're illustrated story sequences you can go through. Looking at the game through an isometric perspective can kind of get tiresome at times. So these type of interactions are illustrated. They're very cool. Uh, they give you a way of interacting with the world in, with the world in a non-traditional way. So, But we don't want to go in that dungeon right now. We're going to try to go into the, the ogre's cave. Is Alf going to get up, or do you need to rest, maybe? Can you rest, or are you spread out too much now? So. You can't, anywhere that you rest, you have to rest when you aren't in view of enemies and uh, you have to have your party together. So he's got to go back and maybe he can rest and get this guy back up. I hope. Dude's laid <laughs> out. He is laid out. Bring him back, resuscitate, make it happen. Oh, are there enemies in sight? Where? Oh, uh, I think there hidden. might be a beetle, another beetle up, up top. Was it the deer? It couldn't have been the no, deer. No, it's not the deer. Okay. Would have been awesome if it was. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. There it was up there. Actually, like take that guy out. Take that guy out. Oh, man. Uh-oh, more beetles. More beetle adventures. It's going to be tough. So, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get to the ogre, but we can take out these beetles. They're, yeah, I guess... You, the, the ogre, if the beetles were this hard, then the what ogre happens is really with the ogre? The ogre is really tough. <laughs> so the ogre I is just it. a single yeah. guy, but he's he's got a, he's really tough, does a lot of damage. He can knock you down. Really tough guy to deal with. We'll see if this can happen, but it's looking already like yeah. one beetle. So, so this wilderness environment is actually pretty big. You can explore it a lot. Uh, in addition to the, uh, the the ogre cave that you can go to, there are various other places you can explore and little quests that you can do in here. So, good times. No, that's incredible. I mean, it's a very expansive world that you guys have created, right? We've tried to make uh, part. One of the big aspects that made the Infinity Engine game so engrossing was that they were so large and you could explore so much of them. Exploration was something that came up with a lot of our backers when they talked about what they loved about the games. Uh, we didn't want to have big empty areas, though, so we've tried to make sure that the content is very dense in these environments uh, without going overboard. But there's something to find. If you go exploring a hidden sort of corner, you can find, uh, I think it's the guy up there. It's that dude. Hey, he's going? just hauling. He does not want to <laughs> deal with you guys, although, I don't know, the Beatles have had a better advantage. The Beatles have had a good day. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they're going to definitely fight until the end. And they're gonna, just going to take you guys down. Or if they can, I don't know. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they win? No? What? Oh, because your main character, his main character died. Two whites. Incredible. Well done, Adam. 
<laughs> hey, it happens. Good. It happens sometimes. And all I got to say is, not only are they a great band, they're also great monsters. They are. And they've just destroyed, not, they dismantled you guys. Don't disrespect the Beatles. No disrespect at all. Those guys completely own you. <laughs> and it was a great time. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for coming out here cool. and hanging out Thanks with me. Is there anything else you. you want to share with us before you go? Beware the Beatles. That's Beware it. the Beatles. <laughs> I was going to say, there's definitely one thing you could have said. Beware the, Beware Beatles. the Beatles. And it'll be coming out winter this year. Cool. Yep. And we'll be back here with more live coverage at Gamescom 2014.